This is the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast with Nick Cavins. For the first time ever, week 18 of the NFL season is upon us. It is the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast with Nick Cattles. John Zan is subbing in for Nick one more week, but Greg Bedard is here. Uh, normally, we would talk about what transpired last week. But who cares, really? We'll still get into it. We'll talk a little bit about the Jaguars. Most important on everyone's mind, the playoffs. Who will the Patriots play? Uh, Who wants to play the Patriots? Who doesn't want to play the Patriots? Right now, opinions might differ on that. We'll talk about that as well. Are people right now actively seeking to play the Patriots in the first round of the playoffs? Depends on who you ask. Uh, We'll talk about that and a little bit about the Jaguars game as well uh, and give you our prediction for this week's upcoming game against Miami. Uh, But first off, let's start with the playoffs, Greg. Right now, the Patriots are one of five teams guaranteed a spot uh, in the postseason in the AFC, and they could theoretically play anybody right now. That could be Mm -hmm. Buffalo, any of the division winners. They could go as low. They're the four seed now. They could go down to the six, but they could play Tennessee, Kansas City, Buffalo, or Cincy. So let's just start ranking the potential opponents. Let's start with if everybody holds serve and wins, let's start with Buffalo. This is, you know, the one you know, the team you've already played twice. Yeah. And and quite frankly, I think the playoff seeding as it is right now, outside of the Chargers and the Raiders, I mean, who knows? Uh, I like the Chargers in that game, not by a lot, but I think it's going to hold serve. I think it's going to end up the exact same way. You know, there's a lot of talk about this and that, but I think it ends up the exact same way, which would mean the Patriots travel to Buffalo uh, for the divisional round or the wild card game. Um, you know, where I have them ranked, I have them to me, they are the second preferred team just because they are familiar with them. They know, uh, they know how Buffalo is going to play them. They just, they got, they just got Buffalo's best shot. And while the Patriots lost, they played like complete crap in that game. And I'm highly confident that they are not going to do that again. And I think they're going to have a much better, uh, and we've talked about it before in the aftermath of that, where I said, I like them in a rematch. If this, if, if that didn't like say, I think it was great how it worked out for the Patriots when it comes to the playoffs, because the first matchup was basically negated because of weather. They got the Bills' best shot in this game, their best game plan. Now they can adjust to it, and then in the next round, they get to adjust. I don't think there's much the Bills can do different to sort of throw any curveballs at the Patriots. So they know the worst-case scenario with the Bills. Uh, They know that Josh Allen can, you know, he can look great, but he can be terrible. He threw three interceptions last week at a 17 passer rating against a dome, a Southern Dome team at Buffalo in colder weather. And Josh Allen was outplayed by Matt Ryan in that game. And so, you know, they are my second favorite team that I would like the Patriots uh, to play just because the they're a familiar opponent. They know the formula. They know their best shot. And the Patriots can make a lot of corrections from the last matchup. Right. Your number one team, however, is the? Cincinnati Bengals. The and Bengals. Look, yeah, look, I think the I think the Bengals are a good team. Um, there's a lot of unknown with them. I think they're very, I think they're kind of similar to the Patriots other than the Patriots have much better coaching. Uh, I think that, you know, Joe Burrow is essentially a rookie quarterback. He'll be making his first playoff start, same as Mac Jones. So there's no sort of advantage there where you're like, all right, you, you would take Burrow over Mac Jones, of course, but it's not a huge disparity. I think that the Bengals uh, going into Cincinnati isn't that big of a deal, I don't think. You know, they call it the jungle, but it's it's not that big of a deal. Right. Uh, I, I think that the big thing for me is I don't like the Bengals' defense. I think it's very predictable. I think you can do uh, – I think the Patriots can score points. I think they can run the ball and throw the ball on the Bengals. So, if, so it, even if the Patriots' defense isn't good against Burrow – and Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon and all these guys, and they are going to have a tough time with that group. Let's let's you know, let's not have any illusions about that. At least I think the Patriots can. I know the Patriots can keep up against the Bengals. I, I don't like their coaching staff. Zach Taylor, I think, is wet behind the ears. Will be coaching his first playoff game. He's lucky he didn't screw the pooch against the the the, the Chiefs at the end of that game. He almost did that. I don't like. I'm I'm not crazy about the defensive coordinator. 
Lou Anarumo, uh, you know, another neophyte in this situation. So you got to like Belichick, Josh McDaniels at all in a coaching matchup. And, and a lot of times that's what these playoff games come down to. Uh, I do think the Patriots defense is going to have a tough time with the Bengals. I don't think there's much doubt about that, but the Bengals have uh, a shaky offensive line uh, that negates some things uh, will help the Patriots get pressure. So yeah, I want the Bengals if I have my druthers. Okay. And we will talk about whether the Bengals want you, uh, but we'll run through the rest of the AFC. One of the top two seeds, either going to be Kansas city or Tennessee. It's Tennessee as it stands right now. If everyone holds serve, um, you know, that th- they'll be the one seed. Uh, should they fall to two, that is a potential Patriots opponent. Between KC and Tennessee, it looks on paper that Ken- that KC is the scarier team. But in terms of a matchup with the Patriots, Tennessee might be the bigger issue, might be the bigger problem. Yeah, I'm scared to death of the Titans. I, I don't want to play. I don't want nothing to do with them in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how many And you times initially, have- I should point out, on Boston Sports Journal, you pointed out your predictions when you thought the Patriots were going to win the AFC was a second-round loss to Tennessee. Um, you know, and that's how you had the season ending. You face them in the first round. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a quicker death. Yeah, and I actually have a, a decent chance of my preseason prediction coming through, which was 11-6, and six, uh, beat the Bills at Buffalo in the first round, lose at Kansas City in the divisional round. So wow. I, I got a chance yep. to my preseason prediction <laughs> of being good. spot on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the Titans – I'm scared to death of the Titans. Um, look, they're not they're not going to run away from you. They're not formidable. So in a lot of ways, you're like, all right, well, at least we know we're not going to get blown out of the water or fall behind like 27 nothing in the first quarter. You know, where the Chiefs have that possibility, they haven't been that team in a long time, probably going back to the beginning of last year when before Patrick Mahomes had that turf toe. Uh, they've never been the same really since then. Uh, the Titans, you know, Derrick Henry's coming back to he's c- come back to practice this week. They could have a bye where they're rested. Mike Vrabel with more time to think of stuff to just screw with the Patriots scares me to death. The Titans, if they want to run the ball, they can do that. All of a sudden, the Patriots, you know, have to put more resources to stop in the run. All of a sudden, that opens it up to you know, AJ Brown. And if Julio Jones is back and, you know, all these guys who are coming back from injury who you didn't have to worry about the first time. I mean, the the Titans didn't have anybody coming in here and it was still, they were one yard away from making it a one score game midway through the fourth quarter. Right. What do you think they're going to do with a full squad? And defensively, they're a pain in the ass to this offense. Vrabel knows exactly how to annoy Josh McDaniels and Mac Jones. So I my number one team I do not want to face is the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, that's the biggest fool's gold win of the season for the Patriots. Um, mm-hmm. based off of you know how banged up Tennessee was and the fact that they basically dominated you uh in the trenches for what are you the, talking I, about, John? They won by 23 <laughs> points. You're an idiot. If you if you if you just if the game wasn't based on score and was based on amount of plays at the line of scrimmage one i think the tennessee it would have been a two to one uh advantage at tennessee but yeah exactly we know the way people viewed that game you were pretty you you were pretty down on it back then so i agree that's the toughest one uh casey why different this year if they do by chance end up with them because i think uh, patrick mahomes is not the same guy it's just the the offense isn't the thing that scares you like it used to yeah they're not they're not going to run away from you they're they're not going to run off like 30 straight points like they did in two straight visits to gillette uh, whether it was the regular season or postseason where you like this kansas city offense you know when it first started coming up with mahomes and really hitting on it you know you were basically it was like playing an nba team you're like all right we can hold them down patriots played two great first halves yeah. Those two first matchups was with Mahomes. But what happened after that? They came out and they went on like a 30 point yeah. run. It's like it's like an yeah. NBA game. Right. Yeah. And they always had that potential. Even if the Patriots had a great scheme against so and so, they were right. gonna find a way because Mahomes was that good. You hold him to a just, field goal and you got a 40 point second half, you know, and that yeah. could happen, right? It can't happen now, right? He, I mean it could, but it's just, less likely. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It could happen and he could suddenly could, could click for him, but you know, it's basically Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. You mob those guys. Patrick Mahomes is not beating you with the rest of the guys. Like you yeah. could double team, literally double team both of those guys. 
and still and get Mahomes away with it. Mahomes is not putting up 30 points against you. Right. And their defense is vulnerable. I mean, it's better in the second half of the season, but you know, like they against against the Bengals, I think they had a third and 25 and Steve Spagnuolo comes with basically an all-out blitz and Chase, you know, kills them. The Patriots, you know, the Patriots anybody can do that. I mean, if Spagnuolo is going to he is going to roll the dice at times. And you just have to be ready to beat it and take advantage of it. I think the Patriots can do that. Um, you know, it, it just talking about the Chiefs just reminds me of, you know, Brandon Staley in that game that he blew with the Chargers because he kept going forward on fourth down, down and passing up field goals. You know, him saying you got to score touchdowns against that team was so out of touch and just factually not correct. It was like, Basically, it was the equivalent of him saying, like, if they played the Patriots, being like, well, we you have to score touchdowns against that team because you know they're going to come back at some point after Tom Brady left. Like, that's, that's like not acknowledging that Tom Brady left. It's the same thing as not, is, is not acknowledging Patrick Mahomes is not the same guy. They are not the same team on offense. So, for me, I think no matter where it is, KC, here, whatever, I think the Chiefs – are very beatable. The Patriots know how to play them uh, uh, defensively. The Chiefs don't have the weapons to exploit it. And I think the Patriots can control the line of scrimmage in that game. Um, As for the Bengals, we alluded to it a couple times in the pod. There is a feeling based off of their choice to rest Joe Burrow, who did kind of tweak a knee a little bit in that late Mm -hmm. game debacle situation there uh, in in the win over the Chiefs. Joe Mixon on the COVID list, so he's out anyway. And resting some other players, they're going in with a preseason sort of lineup in their uh, season finale against the Browns. The Browns aren't really going to put up that much of a fight themselves, so this could be a total rock fight. But there are some people who believe – Bengals are resting on purpose because they're trying to position themselves uh, for a first round matchup with the Patriots. You don't buy that. I buy no, it. I, Let me ask I, you this. Think, Who's the weakest yeah. team in the playoff for put yourself on the other side of the coin, which team scares you the least in the playoffs of, of the ones in there right now? Yeah, that would be, you know, sort of the uh, out of the wild card teams, basically five and six because the Bengals aren't, Bengals aren't going to have a chance to face I, the seventh seed. I don't. That right. would be a very long shot if that happened. Like a lot of things would have. The Bills right. would have to lose. The right. um, who else? Who's the other division winner? Um, Bills, Tennessee, KC. Yeah, yeah. Tennessee would have to lose. Right. You know that sort of thing. KC would probably have to lose. They're pretty much it's locked in. Right. So it's either it's either the Bills or the Patriots. If you're the Bengals, you would rather face the Patriots and a rookie quarterback. You know, I mean, say what you will about Josh Allen, and I certainly have, and I still believe those things, that, look, he's a very good quarterback, but, you know, he makes a lot of big mistakes in the biggest moments, and he did not play well right. in the in the playoffs last year, either divisional round or the AFC championship game. And so you would rather face the – but you would rather face the Bills because at least they've been there and done that. You don't know any of these guys on the Patriots what they're going to do especially on offense. You don't know what these guys, what's is Aguilar going to come back? What's Kendrick Bourne going to do? Is Hunter Henry any good in the postseason? You know, you don't know any of those things. So, but in terms of the Bengals losing on purpose to face the Patriots, I think it, to me, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah. Bill's and it's it. just people looking for something to talk about. And I'm sure Belichick will, Bill, but Bill, Bill's done it. Bill did it that way against Jacksonville that year. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they've certainly done it, but when you're, you got to look at it this way. If you're Zach Taylor and the Bengals, number one, the the first and foremost, Burrow's a little nicked up. Yeah, that's a it's a bad Automatic. offensive line. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's an easy choice line that got yeah. him killed last year with the yeah. ACL. Right, it's not a very good offensive line. All you need is the it's a divisional game, so all you need is the Browns taking a cheap shot at your quarterback, and your season's over. Just like. You know, remember when Carson Palmer got nailed against, right. I think it was the Steelers in one of the final games of the season when the Bengals were like, I don't know, like 13 and three and, and going toward Carson Palmer got cut down. There goes the Bengals best season back then. Same sort of thing. And, you know, the Bengals, as opposed to the Patriots, Patriots had the latest buy that you could ever have. Plus they had a very late thir- Thursday night game. So there's been a little bit of rest built in here for the Patriots later in the season. The Bengals 
by came early November. This will be the, I think, the eighth straight game that they've played. Their Thursday night game was very early in the season. Um, you know, so the wild card game will be their ninth straight game. That's a lot of football. Plus, you have the Vols, you know, the 17 game schedule this year. Completely different. It changes the circumstances in years past. And then finally, if you're Zach Taylor and you look at the AFC playoff picture and who might be who and who, you don't know. You yeah. don't know what's going to happen. It's very easily the uh, the Patriots could very easily go down to Miami and lose. They've lost to the Dolphins three out of the last four times they played, including including a season finale at home, where playoff seating was on the line, a first round bye was on the line, and the Patriots got ripped to shreds by Ryan Fitzpatrick. So right. you don't know what's going to happen. So if you don't know what's going to happen, plus. The Browns, like you said, Baker Mayfield's out. They're a shit show. They're probably packing it in. At least the Bengals have something to play for. I still bet you the Bengals win that game um, with Brandon Allen. By the way, fun fact, Brandon Allen's middle name, I looked this up on Wikipedia, Duck, D-U-C. <laughs> just, just a little fun fact for you. So the, the Duckster is going to win uh, this playoff game, and it's going to make it mood anyways. All right, so uh, that's looking at the playoff picture. Let's spend just a minute looking ahead for the Patriots this week. The game doesn't mean a ton, um, so it's a question of, I mean, I guess the division is still in play um, if the Bills were to trip up and lose to the Jets, but realistically not. So you have to kind of gamble here. Uh, Go all out and play when you know you got to go on the road and win three road playoff games to get to the Super Bowl starting the next week or uh, give people some rest. And you mentioned it. um, They 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 are kind of rested because of the late buy and because of all of those things. So Mm -hmm. it actually isn't a team that needs to get healthy relative to some of the other teams or some other seasons. Um, But does it even matter? And is there anything in this game that you're looking at or, uh, you know, worried about in terms of uh, the Dolphins? Well, I think, you know, the Dolphins beat them in the in the season opener. I did not, They did not play well in defense in that game um, against Tua. They really, when the game was on the line, they couldn't stop them. I mean, yes, Damian Harris fumbled um, going in, but the defense could have gotten them a stop and gotten the ball back, and they couldn't do that. Um, I I am more interested to see this is a good, um, a very good test for Mac Jones in the passing offense. Are they making progress from the two game losing streak? Does the Jaguars game mean anything? Uh, You know, that was a good exhibition. Uh, The last time they had an exhibition like that, the Jets game, another 50, 50 burger. Um, The passing offense went to the Chargers and really didn't play that well. Mac completed like 51% of his passes. They needed an Adrian Phillips pick six to win that game. It wasn't one off offensively, even though they had their moments. So I want to see if they could do better this time. Take the Jaguars game. Mac got a little bit back into his rhythm. Um, let's see if they could push that forward against a, you know, head coach and defense coordinator who know you. They're going to throw pressure packages right. and coverages at you. Uh, I think that's it's important. I think they need to win this game. I don't think they're good enough not to 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 just throw this game out. I think they need to 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 play well. Yeah. And feel a little confidence going into the postseason. When did when did burger become a thing? When did we just I I don't love it. Uh, no- yeah. <laughs> it's, it's become cliche now. I don't yeah. like it. Uh, I agree with that, Greg. No question about it. Like you haven't played enough games to feel good about who you are to be able to throw a game away. And I don't think it, this team, after having played two garbage games against Buffalo and Indy, can enter the playoffs playing three out of four garbage games and the fourth one being against a friggin', you know, uh, exhibition squad with Jacksonville. That's not a way to enter the playoffs. I actually think they need to, like, flex their muscles and, like, go out there and play, like, a an awesome game against a yep. relatively quality opponent or at least somebody competitive just to prove mm-hmm. that you can. I think they need the muscle memory of actually like playing a good football game, start to finish. I need Mac needs to do things. Mac needs to practice, get it out quicker, make the right reads, you know, like he's got to fix some stuff because he hasn't been playing great. I wouldn't be yep. confident with them going in totally cold. Let's look back quickly on last week's game uh, with the Jacksonville Jaguars, which we don't want to completely put to bed. Um, but again, it's hard to 
you know, you got to take everything in this game with a grain of salt. Anything that worried you after this game? Yeah, I would say the big thing that worried me was the Patriots, after getting exposed, uh, their linebackers and coverage against the Bills. The Bills were basically like, well, either something's open down the field or we're just going to take the check down because we're, it's going to be an automatic eight or nine yards. Um, the Patriots made an adjustment. They decided to try uh, Jelani Tavai, uh, the linebacker, as sort of a sub-package sub linebacker in place of Dante Hightower. It was an utter failure in the game. This is the like same guy who was a map. He's a Matt Patricia favorite from Detroit. That's where he came from. They picked him up on waivers or signed them. I forget what it was. Uh, and they've been trying to make something like this work. Uh, Harvey Lange, I don't think can come back off of IR this season. He, that might be, it might've been his place. Remember Ray, Raquan McMillan was supposed to be that guy. He got hurt is on, has been on IR all season, but they tried to buy out there. It was not any better. Right. It might have been worse in the game. So that's the biggest thing that worries me from this game as far as the defense. The offense, I thought Mack left some plays on the field again. Um, he's not using his eyes as well as he did earlier in the season to look things off. He's a little bit late with his decisions. There was some improvement in this game, but there's still more that I'm like, mm, he needs to be better. He needs to be better for them to win playoff games. Can he get there? I don't know. I think him and McDaniels are working on it. There was improvement over the previous two games. Uh, I just don't know uh, how much. And I think that's it for the world. Let me ask you a quick question on Mac. How much of it, and I know you notice his time per throw, you know, to get throws off has gone up, um, you know, in the last few weeks. Uh, but so has the average yardage, you know, per attempt. Um, is that by scheme? Are they trying to find stuff open more downfield than they were before instead of playing the quick out check down sort of game? Or is he slower on his reads? Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I wrote a column on this sort of, yeah. you know, breaking down Mac Jones. That's what John's referencing. And, you know, his, his time to throw and his yardage were yeah. both up against the bills and the Colts. To me, that was a common, I don't think it was a huge departure to me. It was a combination of falling behind big in both games and they yeah. fell behind basically. So they had to take some shots, you know, for a half and a quarter, a combined 40 to seven in yeah. those two games. So they had to, take some shots, look for some more chunk plays. I also think those teams know how to play the Patriots and, you know, are taking away some of the shorter stuff and making Mac beat them down the field. The Jaguars were, were a lot easier to go against, so it was a lot easier to take the quick check down. But I do think the Patriots are trying to get back to, you know, look, the first, first season, they're not going to be, be able to redo everything. So I think they're trying to get back to, Let's let's be a horizontal, quick passing game. You know, even how Brady operated most of the time later right. in his career here, instead of getting you know too worried about chunk plays, let's just let's just stay in positive uh, down and distance, and the other stuff will come. All right, uh, quickly, Jacksonville game stuff that you found most encouraging that gives you confidence going forward. Uh, I I think the running game in general, especially Ramondre Stevenson, I think this could be a big Ramondre Stevenson game. The 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 Jaguars, uh, excuse me, the Dolphins had a tough time with Deontay Foreman, the Titans running back, and the offensive line, both of whom are similar to what the Patriots do. Right. Um, you know, I wasn't overly enamored with Christian Wilkerson. Yes, he caught two touchdown passes. This is the stuff you're supposed bus. to like, Greg. This is the stuff that I you know, like. But you know, it's <laughs> it, it's funny that everybody gets all you know gets all woo Christian Wilkerson. He's the answer, and you know he caught a a busted coverage. He was wide open. He caught that. Okay, the other touchdown was decent. You know, bad coverage by the Jaguars. But and then okay, he had a drop. He caught it. He had a third down drop, and he dropped the touchdown that was right in his. If Nikhil Harry did either of those things, people would have been like picking him up at the stadium and taking him like to the train station. Yeah. But that, that look, nothing about Christian Wilkerson is actually having to do with Christian Wilkerson. It's simply a referendum on Nikhil Harry and exactly. just, the, and, and the, and what a massive bust he is. So it's just, it's anything but Nikhil. I don't think anybody's that bullish on him being a weapon that they found late in the season, but yeah. Um, but yeah. go on other things that you're confident yeah. in. Yeah. Probably the big thing was I, I thought Duggar um, played really well in this game and that yes. was big. He played confident. He, you know, he saw, he, he, he read his reads very quickly, made a couple of really nice sticks in the running game, had the interception where he read the quarterback's eyes. That's all good stuff. That's the Kyle Duggar that this team needs to play <laughs> yeah. in the playoffs. And he didn't punch anyone. 
which is good. Um, all right, we are going to shift to the Boston Sports Journal member question of the day. Make sure to check us out and everything that Greg does over at BSJ for $39.99 on the annual plan. Not only you get top-notch analysis of all the Boston pro sports, but if you're a Patriots junkie, which if you're listening to this podcast, we assume that you are. Membership at BSJ gives you access to all of Greg's video analysis on the coaches' film uh, and direct access to him on weekly chats. So once again, uh, head over to... Uh, uh, Boston Sports Journal, subscribe today if you don't already. And if you have subscribed, please tell a friend. Uh, Greg, what's the question of the day? So it's from Wheel33, and he yep. asked, Greg, I believe that after the preseason you made a comment that Max Jones's floor was Kirk Cousins and his ceiling was Drew Brees. Have you seen anything after 15 games that would have you alter your range for Mac? Um, No, I, I would say... No, I Kirk Cousins. Now I think that maybe Kirk Cousins is is a high floor, a high floor. Yeah, yeah I do a it's little a high bit. Floor. I, yeah, that's that's my only thought. I do still think that he could be like Drew Brees, you know, with you know the right offensive coordinator and the right weaponry, you know, just like you know Brees had Sean Payton and really good guys, a really good offense in New Orleans. Not the biggest arm talent, used his mind a lot of the time to do what he did. In, in New Orleans. And I think Mac Jones can do the same sort of thing. You know, now, as far as this floor, I mean, I guess to be totally honest and look, I'm not BS in here. I'm not trying to give you a controversial opinion, but after watching him his first year and what he's done, you have to say that maybe Matt Castle is his floor. Well, I think that would be his floor. Yeah. Or, you know, Matt Castle went 11 and five. Um, you know, and then he was a Pro Bowl quarterback, as Chris Gasper loves to point out. I thought Matt Castle was garbage and not anything and wasn't going to be, you know, not garbage, but I just thought he was a, he was nothing. He wasn't going to be a difference maker. I don't think that about Mac. I've never had that. I've never watched him and thought he's just a guy. And so can we make Chad Pennington on the floor? Honest, after this year, that's his floor. And I yeah. do think Breeze is his ceiling. That's quite a range. Um, <laughs> it is. It's it's an insane range. Uh, what's what? If I were to move those goal, if I were to move it a little bit, I, I might say Cousins is closer to the ceiling uh, because it's not an insult. Um, wow. It's not as big an insult. Breeze is. I mean, you're talking about potentially a top five to eight quarterback of all time. I think that's you a, get there. Remember, Drew that, Brees got run out of San Diego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a super high ceiling, but you can see it. It's more of a touch guy, a guy who can threaten vertically without putting a ton of zip on the ball, make the really quick reads. He's not super tall. Even, you know, Brees is actually a little shorter. There's a lot of physical comps there uh, and his processing speed, so I could see that. But it's funny when you throw Cousins on the table as a comp, whether you call him a ceiling or a floor and everybody gets all insulted by it. That's yep. a professional quarterback. Who's, you know, if you look up his numbers for this year, they, they may be better than the actual performance, but he's got pretty good. That's not a bad quarterback right now. Um, yep. So yeah, but anyway, that's it for this week on the Greg Bedard Patriots podcast. We, uh, Nick Cattles will be back. He's out conquering LA, you know, it's Sacramento right now. He's made the big move. He's running stuff out there, uh, but he's going to join. It's the Bermuda Sacramento is the new Bermuda triangle. <laughs> he, Nick's gone out there and has yet to be heard from. <laughs> <laughs> But we we do believe we're going to outfit him with Wi-Fi and a camera and a microphone, and he'll be back doing this uh, next week as we preview the first uh, the opponent, uh, you know, Patriots playoff uh, opponent uh, heading into Wild Card Weekend, uh, most likely the Bills or the Bengals. Of course, please subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff. The Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast, most popular Patriots podcast in town. Thank you guys for joining us and listening. <laughs>